I'm Yeonjo Sung from Seoul National University. Today I'm going to tell you about our new theory that enables lightweight modular verification, which is applied to COMSER to make it support linking between C and handwritten assembly. This problem is often called as compositional compiler correctness, and there have been several works addressing it for COMSER. First things first, let's briefly review COMSER and its existing extensions, and then I will present our work. <coughs> Concert is the first realistic verified compiler developed by Javier Loire, <coughs> compiling a large subset of C down to x86, ARM, POWER, and RISC-V. Its correctness is formally proved in the proofs of C and Coke. As a result, Concert has been used as a backend for various verification projects, such as Oracle's and VST. Okay, so what has actually been verified about Concert? Concert verifies the standard notion of compilation correctness called behavioral refinement which says that the compiled target program behaves as specified by the source. In other words, the behaviors of the target is included in those of the source. To prove this, Comser uses a technique called closed simulation. It requires to first define a relation R called a simulation relation between the program stage of the source and target, and then prove that each step of target execution has a matching step in the source with respect to R. The proof proceeds like this. It is then straightforward to establish behavioral refinement since each target behavior has a matching source behavior. However, this technique works only for the closed programs, by which I mean those that contain all the information needed to execute them. This is because without executing the programs, the simulation <coughs> argument cannot proceed. Due to this restriction, the original source correctness proof could not support any form of separate compilation because that involves compilation of open programs. To overcome this limitation, several approaches have been proposed. This table compares those approaches, <coughs> namely, oh, sorry, namely self-concert, concert X, and compositional concert, shortly compcom, with their pros and cons. First, self-concert supports separate compilation while using closed simulations, which keeps these proofs lightweight. The reason why it could use closed simulation, even though compiling open programs, is because it restricts linking in certain ways. Specifically, it only allows linking between modules compiled by the same compiler. As a consequence, it also does not allow linking with handwritten hand assembly. On the other hand, Comsert X and Comcom fully support linking with those modules such as handwritten assembly. Second, Comsert X supports fully general linking but still using closed simulations, which also keeps its proofs <coughs> lightweight. This is possible because this time it restricts its input source modules in certain ways. Specifically, input source modules are required to be verified against certain specifications and also should have no mutual dependence between them. Third, Compact fully supports both linking and input modules without any restrictions. As a result, it cannot use closed simulations and instead uses a more general technique called open simulation. Open simulations relates open programs by proceeding the simulation argument only for the known code while conservatively assuming possible behaviors for the unknown code. However, to make it possible to compose open simulation proofs for different passes, ComCom introduces certain restrictions and complexities in the proofs, which makes the proofs more heavyweight. Our work removes such restrictions and complexities, thereby making open simulations lightweight. For this, we developed a new theory called ROSC, refinement under self-related contexts, which generalizes the standard notion of contextual refinement. This theory automatically makes open simulation proofs composable. Our result is Comsort M, which improves ComCom by making the proofs lightweight. This table shows a brief comparison between them. ComCom extends Comsort 2.1, while Comsort M extends the latest version, 3.6. Compared to the old version, the new version of Comsort includes more complex optimizations, such as those employing independent static analyzers. Also, ComCom misses the first two passes in the front end, while Comsort M covers all the passes. Most importantly, Comsert M's development is much more lightweight than ComComp's. Specifically, the size of ComComp is twice as big as its, <coughs> as big as its baseline Comsert in terms of significant lines of code. But the size of Comsert M is only 30% bigger than its baseline Comsert. Note that even Comsert X, using closed simulations, has bigger overhead, like 40%. We also developed Comsert M as an add-on package to Comsert by reusing most of the existing proofs. 
This is possible because most of the simulation arguments behind open and closed simulations are the same. <coughs> the paper also includes other interesting contributions than simplifying the proofs, which I will briefly discuss at the end of the talk. I will discuss the problems with open simulations first, and then show you how we solve them. As I said before, open simulations have problems with composing the proofs. Specifically, there are two problems. The first problem is that TomCom forbids the use of different custom open simulations for different passes, which is crucially used to simplify the proofs in the original COMSAR. To see this clearly, consider the following example, where a program is compiled through multiple passes mixed with simple and complex ones. Here, to simplify the proofs, COMSAR uses a simple simulation relation for a simple pass and a complex one for a complex pass. Then, these different relations are vertically composed to establish an end-to-end -end simulation. In summary, closed simulations can be easily composed even between different ones. However, different open simulations do not compose well. Unlike closed simulations, open simulations denoted as dotted lines here need to be composed horizontally because they relate open programs. Specifically, open simulations between open modules mixed with simple and complex ones must be composed to establish a simulation between the linked modules. However, those relations do not compose because they impose different invariants on the memory that are not compatible with each other. As a workaround, ComCom uses the complex, most general relation to verify every pass. Then, proofs using the complex relation can be easily composed horizontally because they all impose the same invariant on the memory. However, this restriction of using a single complex relation for all passes makes the compiler correctness proof more heavyweight because we have to use a complex relation even for a simple pass. Now, the second problem is that the single complex relation needs to be made more complex to support vertical composition. Specifically, unlike closed simulations, open simulations do not easily compose vertically even between the same relation. This is a well-known problem in the literature. For example, a step index logical relation do not compose vertically with itself. In other words, it is not transitive. So in ComCom, in order to make the single complex simulation relation vertically composable, it equips the relation with additional mechanisms, which makes it even more complex. This additional complexity added to the simulation relation makes the compiler correctness proof more heavy. So far, we have seen two problems with ComCom's open simulation, and now I will tell you how we solve the problems using our new theory, Rust. Before telling you how Rust is defined, I will first show you how Rust solves the two problems at high level. Recall the first problem, which is that the open simulations around to Rn here do not compose horizontally. <coughs> our solution is that instead of composing the open simula simulations directly, we indirectly compose them via a super relation. Specifically, here our theory gives an adequate relation called Rust and denoted in red color here and that is composable with itself and includes all the open simulations R1 to Rn. Thanks to this inclusion, the proofs of using <coughs> R1 to Rn imply relatedness in the Rust relation. Also, thanks to the compositionality of the Rust relation, we can compose the proofs horizontally to get relatedness of the linked programs. Finally, by the adequacy of the Rust relation, we obtain behavioral refinement between the linked programs. Now recall the second problem, which is that even if we have a single relation, open simulations are hard to compose vertically. However, for the Rust relation, this is not even a problem at all because it is trivially transitive by the definition. Okay, now I will show you how we define the Rust relation. Suppose we have a set of independent relations R1 to Rn, each of which satisfies adequacy and horizontal compositionality. Here, Adequacy means that related programs have behavioral refinement. Horizontal compositionality between the same open relation is a very natural property that straightforwardly holds because it imposes the same invariant on the memory. It is important to note that we do not require the problematic one, vertical compositionality, for the relations. Now, we define the Rust relation with respect to the given, rela given set of relation R. As the name implies, it is a contextual refinement under self-related contexts. Specifically, programs P and Q are related by Rust if, for any contexts that are self-related by the set of relations R, 
there is behavior refinement between the program P and Q linked with the context. This is exactly the same as the standard notion of contextual refinement, except that the contexts are quantified or self-related ones. This notion of self-relatedness is parameterized by the set of relations R, and means that the context is related to itself by every relation in the given set R. Oh, sorry. Intuitively, this means that the identical pair of context preserves the invariant of each relation in the set R. Also, note that the Rust theory applies only when the linking operation is defined between all modules. Fortunately, TomCom provides the notion of interaction semantics, which allows linking between arbitrary modules, including C, assembly, compiler intermediate languages, and even mathematical specifications. Essentially, this is possible because they all share the same notion of value and memory. <coughs> Finally, for the Rust relation, it is straightforward to prove inclusion, adequacy, and vertical compositionality. Horizontal compositionality also holds, but with un under a minor restriction. The restriction is simply that, in order to compose Rust relations ho horizontally, the modules under consideration here, S1, S2, and T1, T2, should be self-related by the relations under consideration, here R. Now I will show you a simple scenario using Rust. Suppose two source modules, S1, S2, are compiled to T1, T2. They are compiled through multiple passes, and each pass is verified using five different relations. Now, by the inclusion property of Rust, we have that every transformation is related by the Rust relation. Also, by vertical compositionality, we have that S1, S2 are related to T1, T2, respectively. Then, by horizontal compositionality, we have relatedness between the linked whole programs. Note that we need self-relatedness for the source modules and target modules, S1, S2, and T1, T2 here, to apply horizontal compositionality. However, we do not need self-relatedness self -relatedness for the intermediate modules. Finally, by adequacy property, we have behavioral refinement. The key insight behind Rosk is that when composing two relations R1 and R2, instead of requiring the relation R1 to respect R2, Rust requires the modules S1, T1, S1 and T1 to respect the relation R2 here, and also vice versa. Even when two different relations do not preserve the different invariant of each other, a pair of identical modules can easily preserve the invariant of both relations. Indeed, we could easily prove that all C and assembly modules are self-related by the three relations used in concert. Now, I will show you an interesting example of applying Rust to a logical relation. Consider a typed lambda calculus with recursive types. For the notion of refinement, we can use the contextual refinement here. For example, the function taking x and returning x plus 0 is contextually refined by the identity function at type net error net. Here, in order to prove this refinement, one usually uses a step index logical relation, which is included in the contextual refinement. So far, so good. However, what happens if we add syntactic equality operator to the language? Then the contextual refinement becomes the trivial syntactic equality, equality relation. For example, the function in the left is not contextually defined by that in the right. Because the context taking a function and comparing it to the identity function can distinguish the two. However, interestingly, the logical relation is more robust and remains the same. For example, it still relates the two functions. So in this situation, we could take the logical relation as a sensible notion of refinement. But the problem here is that the logical relation is not transitive, in other words, not vertically compositional. Fortunately, Rust comes to the rescue. You can define Rust with respect, respect to the logical relation and use it as the notion of refinement because Rust satisfies all the desirable properties. Specifically, since the Rust relation includes the logical relation, we can still use the logical relation as a verification technique. And moreover, the Rust relation is compositional for free. In the example, the two programs are also related by the Rust relation. Note that, interestingly, the problematic context distinguishing the, the identity function and others is not self-related by the logical relation, so it is treated as a bad context. Indeed. Here, self-relatedness -relate means semantic typing by the logical relation. 
In conclusion, given a set of independent open relations, CNS proof techniques, Ross gives a notion of contextual refinement extending them that is fully compositional. This allows us to use different relations for different verifications and freely compose them. Our paper also includes a number of other contributions. First, we proved the soundness of interaction semantics of, of assembly modules with respect to their syntactically linked semantics. Actually, the original interaction semantics was not sound, so we had to repair it, which requires some interesting ideas. Most notably, we had to introduce non-determinism in Comster, and we developed a technique called mixed simulations to handle it nicely. Second, to demonstrate the power of allowing arbitrary relations, we added and verified a new optimization path eliminating unread globe variables, which requires a new, more powerful simulation relation than those used in the original Comster. Third, we also demonstrated that ROS can be used to freely compose verifications of modules against their mathematical specifications. For this, we proved the correctness of two mutually recursive summation functions implemented in C and assembly, performing different memoization optimizations against the pure mathematical summation functions. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for listening. So it's, I had a, a little hard time understanding where do the various relations come from? Uh, where do the, what comes the, 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 the small relations that you combine and... Uh, the small relations. That is used in original comp uh, compiler correctness proof. Uh, so as I said in the closed simulation slide, when you want to prove some, when you want to prove behavior refinement, standard techniques to use simulation, and simulation means that you define such a relation and prove that every matching, every target step has matching source step. So, so each each little R, R1, R2 is associated to a different compiler? Uh, sorry? Ah, okay. Ah, you want to know the name of the relations? Ah, uh, so Comster uses three different relations, exactly memory injection, memory extension, and memory identity. And why Comster uses three relations is that it wants to prove simple paths in simple way and complex paths in complex way. So one relation is identity, which means that source and target memory is exactly the same for all the time, which is not true for all optimizations. So one is identity, and there is a simple one. And there is some complex one also uh, called injection. It has some technical things. So yeah. One more question. Um, so um, suppose I uh, invent a fifth uh, correctness relation now, R5 or so. Um, how, what effect does that have on the verification of the existing passes because the overall set R is now bigger, so each of the languages will at least be proven to, uh, will need to be proven to uh, these additional constraints? Uh, thank you for the great question. And so in this slide, that is actually what we do. So when you add a relation, you have freedom to use that relation in your path. And we, wh what we want is that that does not affect other passes as much as we can. So it does affect something. And something is that in the horizontal composition, we require the source and target modules to be self-related by R. So adding a relation to R means that you need to prove something more. But it is usually trivial to prove because any sensible language and any sensible relation is self-related, as far as I know. Okay, so thank you again.